All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you book, with a new episode of Life After Navy. So uh, in this episode, we're gonna talk about having a plan for uh, transitioning out of the military. So these are uh, just some of my tips for uh, people who are currently in, who are looking to get out, whether it's in the next couple months, couple years, whatever the case may be, if you're retiring, you know? So these are just a couple tips that I have. And a lot of it's just kind of common sense, but I feel uh, the importance of it needs to be said. So here we go. Um, and these are in no particular order, by the way. So just, just off the top of my head. So um, number one, have a savings plan. Even if you don't think you're gonna be getting out, if you want to re-enlist or do your full 20 and then deuce out and live off that sweet retirement pay, um, I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you um, have a savings plan. And uh, I had one pretty much ever since I joined the Navy, really, even though it was much smaller scale. But what I would do when I first joined was I had like an auto debit system, which would automatically transfer a certain amount of money to my savings account every check period. So um, when I first started off, because I wasn't making a whole lot of money, I had it set to 50 bucks every paycheck. And then once I started making rank and started, you know, getting like overseas housing allowance and all that kind of stuff, and I was making more money, um, I obviously upped, upped that uh, amount. Um, eventually, I think it got up to like $400 a paycheck period or <laughs> something ridiculous. But uh, again, it all depends on how much money you're making and stuff like that. Just the auto debit system, just set it, forget it. So at, le at least you have that much money in savings. And you know, you can obviously add more from your check if you can, but I would recommend to at least uh, have that system set up just as a fail safe. And originally I did it to save up for uh, plane ticket money so I could go home on leave, you know, when I could. But eventually it got to a point where you know, I was putting away so much money that it didn't really, you know, put too much of a dent on my savings and was I was able to continually save up more and more and more and more money. So it's just kind of how that works. And uh, it's a great thing to have because you never know what's gonna happen. It's good uh, emergency money and stuff like that. So definitely have a savings plan set up. I would ideally shoot for, um, if you are planning on getting out, or you're near your, you know, EAOS, um, I would definitely shoot for having at least, bare minimum, $10,000. Like, bare minimum. If you have more than that, great, awesome. I had about 15 grand, I think. Yeah, about 15 grand by the time I got out. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it's all pretty much gone now because of uh, buying a car, moving expenses, and stuff like that. So, you know, it looks like a lot of money, but, you know, think about what your future expenses are gonna be, and uh, it's really not that much money. So, number two, um, have something to go home to when you get out. Have something to do. Now, I made this mistake when I got out because when I got out, I was starting school the next semester. Ideally, I wanted to start school, you know, immediately when I got out, but because of uh, shifting schedules and stuff like that, I missed the boat on the uh, fall semester. So I had to have it pushed back to the spring semester, or the winter semester, as some people call it. So there was a, a three-month gap in between when I got out of the Navy and uh, when I actually started school. And uh, I just kind of thought, you know, well, I'm only going to be here for like three months. You know, it's kind of stupid to get a job now, right? Because, you know, it'll just look bad on your resume. You'll look like a job jumper. It's like, well, you were only at such and such job for like three months. Why the hell should I hire you? And uh, I was going to move up here anyway, so yeah. <laughs> but I, I highly suggest that you do, even if it's just a temporary little shit job, working at McDonald's or Walmart or something like that. Just something simple, just something to do. You know, the point of the job isn't to um, make a whole lot of money or, you know, invest your career into it or anything like that. Just don't worry about 
the whole stigma of working at McDonald's right when you get out of the Navy, because that's all you can get. You know, just have something to go home to, you know, and, you know, even if, you know, it's working for your friend who has a dad who, you know, has this company or something, you know, just basically have a job to go home to, you know, you know, send out your applications, stuff like that beforehand, ideally, but, you know, just let them know, hey, I'm getting out of the service. Um, I won't be available for an interview until such and such time. You know, depending on the company that may or may not fly, I highly recommend you have something to go home to, something to do, because if you don't, A, you're gonna burn through your savings a hell of a lot quicker, which is what happened to me, because, you know, I wasn't making money and I had nothing to do, so I was spending money, you know, and a lot of it, stuff I needed, yes, but there's also a lot of stuff I really didn't need that I just spent because I was bored. And, you know, Amazon Prime is <laughs> a prime example of something you shouldn't do when you don't have a job and you're living off savings. So again, ixnay on the I'm Prey. And uh, the third thing, and this kind of goes into, you know, again, common sense, but do the GI Bill. You know, whether it's post 9-11, Montgomery, whatever, go back to school. You know, I don't care how old you are or whatever, but go back to school, get some training. You've worked so hard in the service. It's dumb, like straight up dumb to not take advantage of that. Even if you do have your bachelor's degree or master's or whatever the case may be, or even if you don't, you know, especially if you don't, get your degree for fuck's sake. But yeah, just sign up for that as soon as possible. Go through e-benefits, get your certificate of eligibility, uh, through post 9-11 or Montgomery, but you know, nine times out of 10, I would recommend post 9-11 because you get the nice housing allowance and that's cool. But there are some instances where you do, where Montgomery GI Bill is more beneficial, but again, nine times out of 10, it's gonna be the 9-11, so. <laughs> or would that be nine times out of 11? I don't know. But uh, in any event, get those benefits as quick as you can. If you know you're gonna be getting out, like you have a set uh, separation date and stuff like that in mind, um, definitely send out college applications beforehand. And this is kind of, this isn't its own separate tip, this is kind of just rolls in with the third tip. Um, so what I did when I knew I was getting out was I sent out uh, college applications, I sent some out to OSU, Ohio State, and I sent one out to uh, Western Michigan University in uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan. And so I was just waiting for their response and all that kind of stuff. And I got accepted at Western, you know, provided that I turned in my certificate of eligibility. So I got like a preliminary um, acceptance, you know, once I gave, the, gave them the certificate of eligibility, then it'll be official. So again, you have to be accepted into a institute of higher, higher learning, so college. <laughs> so if you tell them, and a lot of colleges have like a veterans program, so I would recommend contacting the VA coordinator at whatever college you're going to because there are certain uh, different requirements that veterans have to fulfill before they can be accepted into a college. And one of them is presenting the certificate of eligibility, presenting your DD-214 in order to, it's kind of a catch-22 in some instances. You know, you can't get your certificate of eligibility unless you've been accepted into a college and you can't, you know, get accepted into college unless you have a certificate of eligibility, which again is why you need to coordinate with your VA coordinator. Let them know like, hey, I'm getting out such and such date. I'm not out yet. What do I gotta do to, you know, get that approval from the college saying, you know, hey, he's been accepted, you know, pending the certificate of eligibility. And, you know, that's what I got. And then once I got that letter from Western, I sent that in to the, to, uh, the VA for my certificate of eligibility. And I got it within like less than a week, actually, which is pretty surprising considering some of the horror stories I've heard about uh, the VA, but They've worked pretty fast for me, so, you know, just my experience. Um, so those are just a couple tips that I recommend you guys do um, if you're thinking about getting out while you're still in. Oh, one more tip I just thought of. And uh, it's not necessarily for transitioning 
you know, veterans or anything like that. It's more for just people in the service in general. And that is sign up for a frequent flyer miles program. You're gonna be doing a lot more flying while you're in the service, whether you go home on leave or you go on vacation on leave. At some point, you're gonna be taking leave. You have to, otherwise you're gonna drive yourself bonkers. So I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you sign up for a frequent fly flyer miles program. Just so that way you can save a little bit of extra money when you're doing all this flying. Cause, some, cause sometimes that shit adds up, you know? Especially for me, you know, when I was in San Diego, you know, going back and forth between San Diego and Ohio, it wasn't too bad, you know, maybe a couple hundred, something like that for a round trip. Not too bad, generally manageable. But doing, you know, flights from Ohio back to Japan, that really added up. You know, I obviously couldn't do that as much as I did when I was in San Diego. So again, if I had the frequent flyer miles thing, it would have um, alleviated a lot of that expense. I could have got, you know, a percentage off, stuff like that. So if you're in the service, highly recommend you get on board with the frequent flyer miles program. Seriously, seriously. So that about does it for this video. So yeah, this is the Andy Son. Sign up for now, thinking you guys boop, for uh, watching this video and watching my other stuff. And uh, if you have any tips for uh, transitioning veterans, what they should do while they're in in order to make their transition better, uh, feel free to leave something in the comments below in the boop. boop. And I uh, also want to thank you guys for liking the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.